Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I'm about to unbox a brand new Squire Supersonic. They finally made these available to retailers after they, uh, they leaked six months ago, right around winter NAM. It's almost time when it would be summer NAM when they would have announced these things officially. <laughs> so now you can just buy them. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't wait for uh, Fender to offer to send me one. I sent a request in and uh, I just didn't want to wait. So over the weekend, I put in the order because I'm just so excited about this line. Nice, a box in a box, as it should be. Oh wait, nope. <laughs> it's a protector over a guitar in a box. Before I pull this out, let's have some hopes. I hope this is a good guitar. I hope I like it a lot. <laughs> I've wanted a Supersonic for a super long time. Um, I've been very impressed with my experiences with Squire over the past dozen years, something like that. Every Squire I've had over the run of this channel, I've just loved. So I'm expecting to love this, but I could always be let down. And I, I hope that doesn't happen. Nothing else in the box. Seems to be a baked potato up here. Silica gel? No, 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 no. I'm kidding. I don't eat silica gel. Not raw. You gotta cook it first. Got the old scout knife here. Liberate some tape. Get in the pink. Getting a peek of the paint. I chose blue because the, the gunmetal gray or graphite gray or whatever it is, uh, is basically the same color <laughs> as my background here and the shirts I always wear and it would have just blended into the background. If it was the old days where I was on a white background, I might have gone with the, uh, with the graphite. Here we go. The slow and dressing. Oh, interesting. The neck is glossy. I was expecting it to be um, a matte finish. And I was a little bummed about that, but it is a glossy neck. I like glossy. I know some of you right now are bummed because you prefer matte, but uh, I like a nice slick glossy neck. I know people always ask when there's a glossy neck, oh, is it sticky? Is it sticky? I'm kind of sticky, so maybe I'm not the best person to judge that. Some kind of pack here. Wow, they're really stepping up their uh, sign up for a Fender Play game. This isn't a sticker, this is like a whole little pack promoting it. Oh man, here we go. There it is. I need to do some poses for the thumbnail. <laughs> Am I going to use any of those? I don't know. Hmm. Like I said, I was worried that it was going to be a matte finish and, you know, have sort of like an affinity sort of feel and right off the bat, I'm not getting that vibe. This is giving off that uh, that classic vibe vibe <laughs> as far as Squire quality goes. Something I've been wondering, I've, I've been looking at pictures and the bottom horn on this run looks softer to me, rounder than previous runs of Supersonic. I couldn't tell if it was an angle thing with the photos that they have online, but now that I have one in hand, I'll need to do some comparisons to photos. Kind of the same color as my eyes here. Very lightly misty, sort of metal flake. Not a hard metal flake at all. Unique 
neck plate design that's actually recessed into the body. It's a fun touch. Some polishing compound left on this. I'll be able to get that off. No problem. Looks like a big, heavy trim block back there. I'm gonna have to take this thing apart at some point to take a look at the guts. Punched steel. Bridge saddles there. I like that. I like a vintage touch. Uh, split top tuners as well. You know I like that too. Right off the bat, I'm excited about this. I'm very happy about the quality of just the initial appearance of it. Really decent fretwork on there. The sort of fretwork where I wouldn't notice it unless someone asked. Like, hey, what about the frets? Oh yeah, it's got frets. Let's take a look at it. Basically the same kind of fretwork that I've come to expect from classic vibe level stuff that I'm familiar with on uh, the Starcaster and other Squire guitars that I like. There we go. The bar wiggles a bit. I'm a big fan of wrapping Teflon tape around the threads on trim bars. Looks, all, looks like I'll need to dial that in a bit. It's a little bit stiffer than I like, but I'll spend some time dialing that in. An interesting feature of, uh, of the Supersonic is that it has a narrower uh, nut width than your standard Fender guitar. The standard Fender guitar has a 43 millimeter nut width, and these have a 40, so it's a tiny bit more compact. I'm a big fan of smaller feeling guitars. Uh, one of my all-time favorite guitars is my 90s reissue Duo Sonic, and it's a very small neck. So I'm excited about that smaller feeling nut up there. Right, let's, uh, let's do the thing. Let's plug it in and tune it up and see what it sounds like. Now, is she in tune? I hope not. They're not supposed to ship in tune. Nope. All right, let's tune her up. Him up, it up. I'm not sure this guitar has a gender, honestly. Let me check. I don't see any genitals on this guitar. <laughs> Obviously, this thing needs time to break in those strings. It's right out of the box. I'm, a, I'm feeling things for this. I'm having a great time right off the bat. I've barely started playing it. Uh, something that I always kind of made fun of is the reverse headstock on these, but here in my hands, there's something really endearing about this giant reverse fin sticking out the other side of it. I don't know, it's kind of fun. I do need to get the Teflon tape on that because I, I, I just cannot abide by a wiggly bar. I need my wiggle stick firm and where I left it. The bridge pickup sounds really dark and like woofy to me. The neck pickup is definitely more my style, a clearer sort of sound. Interesting that that bridge is so dark. The action's a little bit higher than I would prefer. The neck is totally straight, so I'll be doing some adjustment on this to dial it in just how I like. I'll be dialing in the bridge just how I like the uh, the trim to be just on the edge of floating. Not floating, still resting on the body, but I like it to just, just with a little, little tap, have it float away from the body. It's just a little bit too stiff right now. Let's, uh, let's throw on some dirt. A little bit of light DOD 250 style dirt here. Ah, man. 
Give the strings a good stretch. Kind of feels like they have a heavier gauge of string on here. Maybe like 11s or 12 or something like that, which I appreciate on a shorter scale guitar. Does it say in the thing here? Maybe someone out there knows what gauge strings they put on these. Looks like a generic like silver ball end on all of them. I know I just put it out of tune. Comfortable body. It's a smaller body. I, I don't know if it, I don't know if everyone realizes that, but this is a fairly small feeling guitar. It's not just an optical illusion because I'm uh, in fact seven foot sixteen inches tall. Um, this is a smaller guitar, but it is very comfortable against the body. Uh, the back horn feels like it sticks out extra far, giving it a bigger feel, even though the body itself is pretty compact. I'm gonna need to do all my normal little tricks that I do on guitars to get tuning stability. I'm gonna have to graphite the nut and whatnot. I'll probably raise up those string trees to give more slack on those. You know what, I have some graph tech string trees. Maybe I'll put those on there. Um, I'll probably do some cosmetic stuff on here to make it my own. <laughs> I need to adjust the action and the trim, like I said. Um, but I'm having, a, I'm having a great time right now just off my initial first impressions of the build quality. Like I said, I'm happy about the neck finish. It doesn't feel sticky to me, it's just a nice glossy neck, but I mean, preference is preference. You might prefer matte. Um, I like the body. I like the way it feels against my body. There's a nice body to body connection happening. Uh, the paint, I'm not huge on, even though it is kind of really close to you know, the color blue that I use in all the 60 cycle on graphics. So maybe uh, this is the finish I deserve for now. Feels like that bridge pickup really wants dirt. It is not meant for clean. some intonation on this too. It feels like it's out. The, the tuning might just be slipping, but it feels like uh, it's a little bit out across the fretboard. going out of tune as I play. 
The bridge is floating a tiny bit now, now that I've got it up to tune, so that might be contributing to that. You know what, why wait? I'm gonna go get a pencil right now and we're gonna graphite this nut. I've got one right here, because of course I do. This thing is just having a tough time staying in tune. I wanna give it a little help. I wanna play this thing and, and have fun with it. I can't do that if it's constantly jumping out of tune on me. Oh, there we go. That's a rough nut slot right there. I can feel how gritty it is. That might be the offender. I want that slippery D. This is one of those easy mods everyone should be doing at home. If you're having tuning stability issues, don't go run to some gadget. Don't go run to a guitar tech and throw $100 their way. Grab a, like a 99 cent dollar store mechanical pencil and just rub that graphite based lead into your nut slots. Yeah, there's a couple little rough spots in these nut slots. A little bit surprising. It's shocking to me how different those pickups sound. The neck is like exactly what I would go for in a pickup, kind of open and a little bit hollow sounding. Almost jazz masterish, and then that bridge. It's like a punk rock pickup. It's tight and dark. Feels like it's a little bit hot. More of like a like a woody woofy thud to it. Time will tell if I like that. It might be the perfect balance for, you know, jumping between the styles that I play anyways, like punk to uh, garage to surf. I want to know if I can coil cut these things because of course I do. <laughs> but I could put a push bowl on there and split the coils. I might be very happy. Um, one more tuning. Let's give it one more stretch. Just in case it's the strings. All right, let's try some higher gain stuff. This is my Rev G2 on the floor. already I cannot win with this thing right now get it out of its system.
high gain and a delay, I'm gonna play Top Gun every single time. It's, it's just what's gonna happen. It wasn't even out of tune. I'm just like second guessing myself now. <laughs> this thing is so wiggly out of the box. The neck is straight, seems to be solid. It's just, uh, it's just warming up, I guess. Nothing shows off a guitar's true tone like a just completely destroyed octave fuzz. <laughs> I think it's finally starting to be broken in. Jeez. Yeah, this thing had a, a bit of an issue. Wait a minute. is crazy. I didn't know that. There's not, there's, there's not a tone control. It's two volume controls for blending the pickups. What? Is that the way all supersonics have been? <laughs> Thank you. 
That's really bonkers. I had no idea it was a different kind of um, control set there. I kind of want to shift this switch around to be vertical instead of front and back for, you know, stuttering kill switch type stuff. What a trip! <laughs> I was saying before that completely distracted me. Still completely wild to me how different those uh, two pickups sound. I don't know if they're completely different pickups or they are just by luck of the draw, ended up being different somehow. But the bridge is definitely formulated, characterized, dialed in better for distortion. It pushes distortion into a nice crisp, kind of like full sound. A nice crisp, like full range, but not wide range, like a full like EQ range kind of distortion where clean, it sounds kind of dark and muddy. The neck pickup sounds great clean. It sounds kind of hollow and surfy. It might be a perfect combination for me, or I might get tired of it at some point and swap out pickups. Feels like I finally found some tuning stability with this. Now listen to how much more gain there is on the bridge.
I mean, I keep saying it, but it's amazing to me how surfy the neck is and how not surfy and how thuddy and barky the bridge is. But the bridge just loves dirt. It just loves distortion. It's gonna take me a while to figure out the soul of this guitar, what it wants to be, what kind of music it wants to play. Right now, I'm getting a strong like shoegazy sort of vibe off of it. A strong like turn up the fuzz and let it doom sort of vibe off of it. I don't think this thing wants to be a surf guitar, but once I get it dialed in, once I get that trim dialed in, once I get this thing figured out, once I get the neck wired and I'm, I'm really comfortable with it, I might change my mind, I don't know. But, I don't know, besides the tuning issues that I was played with starting off, let's kill the amps for a sec, uh, I'm very happy with my purchase. I'm very happy with the quality of it. Um, it's always a gamble buying something without having seen it in person. And I know that that's my job for you guys, but no one did that job for me. There was no way for me to know a lot of the details of this thing, how it would feel in person. Um, so I feel good about my purchase, I do. Um, it's starting to have tuning stability now after 45 minutes of recording. <laughs> Uh, but that's not completely abnormal. I did put the graphite on there. The strings need to be stretched out. It feels like they're heavier gauge strings, so maybe they didn't cut the, the slots for a heavier gauge, and so they're binding or something like that. Um, maybe the ball ends were shifting in here because they were never fully put up to tune or something like that. Maybe even the neck joint was settling. I don't know. There's a lot of different things, uh, but I have a feeling that the more I play it, the more it's going to kind of, you know, rest into itself. What do you guys think? What do you think of this guitar? Tell me in the comments down below. Nothing's off limits. Take it apart, I guess. Uh, I'll be taken apart in future videos. And I still have one other guitar on order that I purchased with my own money, uh, the Cyclone. I've got the new Squire Cyclone coming in. And based off of this thing, I'm excited. I'm hoping that will be my surf machine. I'm hoping that will be my surf machine from this product line, from the Paranormal uh, Squire product line, because it's got three single coils in it. It's a Mustang shape. I'm getting the blue one. Uh, I know the pink one's more exciting, but it's too close to my skin color, <laughs> and it would just wreak havoc on color correcting video, so I had to make the video choice and go with the blue instead of the pink. But um, yeah, the quality control on this, like I mentioned earlier, is there. It hits that classic vibe, kind of higher in Squire sort of feel. And so I'm very happy about that. I love the aesthetics. I love the cream uh, pearl here. I always hate like the bright white, like rip through your eyeballs, kind of bright white uh, pearloid. That's just too much. This is the more subtle creamy pearloid that uh, I have a more of an appreciation for. Yeah. I like it. I'm excited to uh, to get to know this guy. All right, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me a rude, nasty comment, support us on Patreon, and uh, stay grounded. I'm gonna play out with something. I'll put down a loop and just have some fun for a while. How about that? Mm -hmm.